Thank you very much. Those were some wordy introductions. Clearly, we could use some generative AI technology to maybe help shorten our, our introductions a little bit. Um, thank you guys very much for your time today. Uh, JD and I are really excited to talk to you about this concept called an AI COE. Um, AI COEs, we believe, are really important for client organizations trying to embrace their AI journey. And before we dive into the conversation, I wanted to make this a little bit interactive and ask this group, maybe just a quick show of hands, who here has an AI COE in their organization today? I see very few hands going up, which is a little bit surprising, because then I was going to ask the next question was for how long have you had those COEs, but I don't want you guys to get tired keeping your arms up for a little while. But, uh, but thanks for sharing that. One of the things that we found with our clients as they embrace AI and try to adopt that in their organization is that how are, having a powerful AI center of excellence in their organization allows for a lot of success. Um, so here's our quick bios. We'll skip over that. Um, but really what we've, what we've seen uh, through our client conversations, then AI is really important for what organizations are trying to do, but also it's becoming a strategic conversation at the board level, at the CEO level. A lot of you who are working for client organizations today are getting those mandates handed down to you to say, how do we drive cost savings? How do we drive efficiency? We're moving beyond the education conversation and tell me a little bit about this technology to how do I implement this technology now to drive savings? And oh, by the way, what are the legal, legal regulatory compliance risks that we have to face when we talk about this? Um, one of the things that we've seen through our AI Institute survey is that with all this conversation, there's still a big challenge with how we adopt and use AI in organizations to drive business value. So maybe another quick show of hands for us, and hopefully we see more hands up here. Who here feels like they're happy about the journey they're on in terms of business value creation for some of their AI investments? I see more hands up than I did for the COE, so that's a good sign. But a lot of hands down are a lot of people that don't want to participate, which I understand. <laughs> that can happen in these surveys. Um, and so I think what we've seen, I think it was about 25% of organizations are starting to see significant value, but the majority are still sitting back trying to figure out how do they generate value from these investments. And so one of the hypotheses we have is that this concept of an AI COE really starts to drive enterprise value for the organization. And so when you think about the AI COE and its functions and capabilities, we think about both the support functions that the organization needs to have on it. So we heard um, uh, the, the data, uh, D .com, uh, dot data, sorry, uh, individual talking a little bit earlier about the importance of getting data features organized. So the data management, the support functions, the organizations with corporate legatory, legal, regulatory, and risk. Um, as really key parts of the, of the AICOE and the functions that they serve, but then also how does the AICOE engage with the rest of the business? And one of the presentations I sat in yesterday was talking a lot about sort of the chief analytics officer being a, a leader uh, in terms of business development in the organization. So bringing out those value cases to the organization to think about ways uh, that AI or, or analytics at the time can help drive, uh, drive savings, drive business insights, et cetera. And so what you see in the AI COE is that really it's at the hub of a lot of these conversations and needs to be formed with um, the right individuals that can both do the technical work that's associated with delivering the, the solutions and the capabilities, but also that it's got individuals in that team that can help sell and evangelize some of the things you're trying to drive from an AI agenda perspective, and that it has deep connections back into the IT organization um, where you need to uh, harness the power of the IT organization for the data, uh, uh, data, cloud computing capabilities, infrastructure, et cetera, that's necessary to be successful in this space. So these are some of the things we think about when we talk about the AI COE and some of the capabilities. Um, when you think about an AI COE from an operations perspective, um, we think about a couple different categories of, of topics here, and there's some standard operating principles that we think would be helpful, as well as some pitfalls that organizations can fall into. And I've hit on this a lot, but really this concept of business impact. We see these organizations struggle in their implementation of a COE like this when the, when the COE is not able to report back and show and demonstrate the business impact of those investments. And while it seems you know, kind of commonplace, we've been dealing with this for a while, trying to demonstrate the value of IT and technology investments, it still becomes a number one pitfall um, and a challenge for organizations. So when we talk to COEs about what works well, a lot of them are focusing on how do we drive um, business value conversations, how do we build business cases, and how do we communicate those effectively in the organization. Um, the other piece is having a really comprehensive view of the technology stack. 
And so that you've got a good view of what you need end to end to deliver the solutions. And you're also open to engaging with and having conversations about what new vendors, capabilities you wanna to add to that technology stack and a plan about how you wanna do that. So you're constantly innovating and thinking about the technologies that would be helpful you know, as you wanna incorporate them in, into your organization. Um, where we've seen them sort of fall apart is where the AICOE gets a bit disconnected from a client vision or from an overall strategic objective of an organization. And so you might see a COE kind of pop up and start working on a specific project, but that project's not connected to the ultimate you know, shared business strategy that, or you know, shared pillars of growth or things that the organization is trying to do. Um, and when that happens, it becomes a challenge to connect back to the business value equation. It also becomes a challenge um, to really motivate the team, get them connected to what they're trying to do. Um, the other thing that we see too is that uh, you can also start to see this propagate across the organization. So you might have pockets of capabilities where organizations are building an AICOE in one function, building it in another. They're not necessarily talking to each other. Um, they're on different technology stacks or slightly different areas. And so we see that also being a pitfall too, because you love that concept of innovation and you want the organization to be able to be nimble and agile and innovate. Um, at the same time, if you don't provide the guidelines and standards and structure around it, you create a lot of risk for the organization and a lot of duplicative work across, across the different areas too. So these are some of the concepts we think about um, when we talk about AICOEs, and we wanted to share those with the group here, but I think sometimes the best way to understand this is a little bit more through specific use cases of what are we seeing with our clients, what are some examples of what we have. Um, so JD is gonna share with us a little bit about, uh, about some examples. Thank you, Jim. Um, for a technology company that is doing some great work on the AI side, um, you can imagine there's a lot of money being poured into the product side. Not so much on the business operation side. So where are my subscribers Who's, who might churn? Um, marketing that's spending a whole bunch of money trying to figure out, well, how do I allocate it across channels? All typical standard problems that you run into large enterprises. Um, for them, they went down the path of setting up an AI COE, which allowed them not just to get answers to these problems and serve a large number of stakeholders across marketing, product, business development, um, and partner management, but more importantly, it allowed them to innovate on the business um, operation side. So for them, they went down the path of asking a question, well, we want to know what product is trending, which partners are trending, well, we put all of that together in a dashboard, and now we're using it for monthly business reviews. Well, it's been a month, is this information really useful? Not really. So for them, the innovation that the COE drove was, the business problem is we need to get these insights to our stakeholders faster, and alongside, drive a conversation on what actions should we take. So they went down the path of not just the bare essentials in terms of we need to have our dashboards and insights and all of that, but how do you drive um, that conversation to then drive those, those actions alongside? Another thing that the COE did um, on, the side, on the innovation side is um, they looked at, well, how are my how's my data flowing? And within my pipelines, I'm building AI to look at anomalies because I don't want to find out the next day, well, is it, did my report work? Did it not work? Does it even have the right data or not? So they built AI within the pipelines and then they standardized it as a service so that the, the, the spokes that they serve could also tap into the service. So these are things that the AI COE did, which you would typically like not find in a team that is just trying to meet you know, meet their product backlog um, and then complete that. So having a COE enabled them to innovate substantially. Um, in the life sciences side, it allowed a company to scale what, this, what they could do on the COE side. Um, so for them, they went down the path of building about 20 machine learning services, um, 50 or so conversational AI bots, and then hundreds of robotic automations that really allowed them to scale by putting all of this in one place. Um, for a consumer client, it allowed them to unlock margins by centralizing a lot of what they would do in the pricing analytics side and unlocking margin uplift through pricing adjustments. Um, so your AI COEs really allow you to do things that you would otherwise not be able to do by having AI analytics insights all kind of spread out with different groups trying to do their own, their own little things and then fighting over budgets. 
And that's a, that's a great example, JD. The other one that I'm thinking of too is, and you guys might be seeing this in your organizations as well, um, a lot of times we, we've embarked on this concept of an automation COE first. And we brought in robotic process automation, we started to look at different processes to try to improve. And one of my clients went down that journey early on. First, they were a little bit skeptical about the whole idea, because where we just started putting band-aids over technology that maybe needed to be improved over time. And what they realized was by centralizing the sort of intake of ideas around automation, it started to become a really effective place for them to start to think and evolve on not just how to imply robotic process automation and improvements from that technology stack, but also look more broadly to say, what AI capabilities could they plug into that? Um, and really started to create this innovation culture. And so they actually rebranded the COE around AI as they move forward. And it gave them a lot of groundwork to stand on because through their automation COE, they were able to generate a lot of return on investment that they communicated back to the business stakeholders, which I think they felt to be very helpful in terms of showing why this was working, how their processes were efficient, and why applying these new technologies and creating the COE was really useful for the, for the client organization. So um, a couple of different ways on this journey that we've seen our clients go on, and I think really kind of fundamental to this also is having the deep uh, talent capabilities within the COE. One of the things that we've seen from our clients too is that they invest heavily in the talent that sits within the group. Sometimes that's uh, in one single building, sometimes it's a distributed model um, using multiple different geographies, but they're really focused on the development of that team and by centralizing some of that talent capability, what they're starting to experience is that there's a higher retention of those individuals. They're also finding that they can continue to iterate on new and interesting projects over a period of time versus sort of being, let's say, stuck in one area, um, which can maybe uh, hinder a little bit of some of their desire to innovate and create new ideas. There's also a lot of benefit from the COE concept in terms of knowledge sharing. So they're able to talk about one of the interesting things that they're seeing in different parts of the business, and they're creating those connectivities within the team. So a lot of the different sets of benefits that organizations are seeing from the COE concept, and a lot of different ways to kind of get to how to form that COE. Um, one of the things that we've kind of worked with our clients on to approach, and, and JD is part of the team that delivers this on a regular basis, is really this concept of what we call ready AI. And it's really meeting our clients on their journey to create uh, these uh, AI COEs. And a lot of times in your organizations, you're gonna find that you're missing some of the skill sets or capabilities that you have, or maybe some of the experience, and you don't wanna outsource all of those capabilities and experiences to someone else. You wanna make sure that you understand it and go on the journey as well, so that you're not just having a systems integrator part of the journey, finishing a product and moving out, um, but you wanna be part of that team. And so our Ready AI business works really closely with our clients to embed the talent that they need at the time and when they're ready for that talent across multiple different geographies so they can continue on that AI COE journey. And what we found to be really effective on that process is this concept of also having sort of a core team and a flex team with that so that as demand comes into the COE, you're gonna get high priority needs from specific business functions. Um, those are gonna, you're allowed to use that flexible team and flexible capacity to focus on those demands as urgently as you need. JD, anything else you wanna add on this? Um, I think what you can accomplish using that construct is also amazing, taking you from data to insights and actions, which is the dollars piece, taking you from just BI to artificial intelligence, and that journey is typically, well, great, I have BI dashboards, well, let's move on, let's build machine learning on top of it and identify anomalies. Because the last thing that you want is people looking at 20 tabs on a dashboard and sifting through 50 different filters to figure out, well, here's where my insight sits. Yeah. And then moving that forward into actions and driving those actions. And I think that's something that the COE can enable, which a team by itself, a small little team, might not be able to do. Yeah, that's a great ad. So the, the next thing that kind of we wanted to leave, leave you with is sort of a, a concept of kind of what's on the horizon for the AI COE. What's the direction that we're seeing it, it, uh, it take? And right now, organizations, we really feel like are starting to get the sense that we need to put AI as one of the key capabilities to execute against our business strategies. Great. Now, how do we start to think about what are the management systems and capabilities we need to build internally to get us there? And so the AI COE can really go on this journey in terms of helping our clients and, and helping your organizations really start to improve those capabilities over a period of time and start to bring more of those capabilities um, in-house and supported with the right technology stacks, optimizing the infrastructure, helping to support uh, spend management that you need to do around these complex programs as well. 
Um, so that's kind of where we're seeing some of the trajectory of this going forward. And as we've seen before, there are a lot of different on-ramps in terms of building the COE. You can on-ramp through an automation COE. You can start it at the center. You can also look at maybe a specific business area or a function that has a, a high need at the moment, and then think about how you want to you know, pull that into the core part of the organization and start to build more capabilities in and around it. Um, JD, anything else you'd like to like to add on that? Um, no, that's fantastic. <laughs> awesome, great. Well, those are some of the, the key things we wanted to share on the ASU today. Um, we could have gone deep on a bunch of different topics, but 20 minutes is a little bit short, so we wanted to make sure to give you guys a sense of what, what we're talking about in this space. We've had a couple of LinkedIn Live sessions talking about this with one of our clients. We also have some great white papers and materials out there as well, um, so we'd love for you guys to kind of take a look at that if you have some time and engage with us on those conversations. Um, so with that, thank you very much, and thank you to the AI4 Conference for having us here. Appreciate it. Thanks.